and welcome back to Roadmaps to EEG. My name is Erfan Sheikh, and in this module, we will talk about focal seizures, part one. We will have a brief discussion with regards to focal seizures and epilepsies. As we go through some of these cases, we will cover some of the most basic principles when talking about what makes an ictal pattern on EEG. Before we show some examples of focal seizures, we will first discuss some basic principles. A seizure consists of repetitive epileptiform EEG discharges at greater than two cycles per second and or a characteristic pattern of quasi-rhythmic spatiotemporal evolution, that is, gradual change in frequency, amplitude, morphology, and location, lasting at least several seconds, usually greater than 10 seconds. Some seizures may also be associated with post ictal slowing that can be either focal or generalized. An electroclinical seizure may show evolution in frequency, amplitude, morphology, and location. Electroclinical seizures may also be associated with focal electrodecrement at the beginning or onset of a seizure or a low voltage fast activity at the onset. An electroclinical seizure may also be associated with post ictal slowing that could be either focal or generalized. Two other short duration, less than 10 seconds, EEG seizure patterns are electrodecrement and low voltage fast activity seen during clinically apparent epileptic seizures. Another important seizure to recognize are clinical seizures, which may have a proxismal event or no EEG ictal correlation. These are specifically impressive with focal seizures, where they may not be an ictal EEG correlate. An electrographic seizure is any seizure without obvious clinical manifestations. They include epileptiform discharges averaging greater than 2.5 Hertz for greater or equal to 10 seconds or greater than 25 discharges in a 10 second epoch or any pattern with a definite evolution in greater or equal to 10 seconds. The frequency can slow down and would still count. In part one of this module, we will discuss the following seizures, including brief pattern qualifying as ictal with a time-locked clinical correlate, a pattern of low voltage fast activity and evolving rhythm, a focal electrodecrement seizure, and a left frontal seizure. In part two of this module, we will discuss right occipital evolving seizure, a seizure consisting of greater than 2.5 Hertz spike wave pattern, and a right temporal seizure. The first type of seizure we will talk about is a brief pattern qualifying as ictal with time-locked clinical correlate. In this bipolar montage EEG shown is consistent with a brief pattern qualifying as ictal that is time-locked with clinical manifestations. In this EEG, you could see spike wave activity that is time-locked with myoclonic jerking movements as outlined by the red circle and star below in the green EMG1 and EMG2 channels, where each myogenic spike is phase locked with a spike wave complex. Although this pattern is less than 10 seconds in duration, the fact that it is time locked with clinical manifestations qualifies this as an ictal pattern. The same seizure shown in average montage, you could see generalized 2 Hertz spike and polyspiking wave discharges that are time locked with myoclonic movements consistent with a brief pattern that qualifies as ictal. Each myoclonic movement, as outlined by the EMG1 EMG2 artifact, is time locked with a spike and wave discharge. The next seizure we will talk about is a right frontal focal seizure with initial onset as low voltage fast activity and an evolving pattern. In this bipolar montage EEG, shown in the first four to five seconds of the page, is the background rhythm, which comprises mainly of one to two hertz generalized delta activity. The blue arrows depict the onset of the seizure as initial sharply contoured waveform, followed by low voltage, less than 10 microvolts, fast frequency activity between 13 to 17 hertz. This is also known as the onset of the seizure, otherwise known as the first unequivocal ictal electrographic onset, which is depicted by the blue arrows. 
towards the end of the page, you can see how the seizure evolves with low voltage fast activity becoming more apparent and pronounced with FP2 and F4 regions. We will now look at the same EEG in the average montage and take a look more closely at the spatiotemporal evolution. The same page shown in average montage you could see over the right frontal regions in the F8, FP2, and frontal midline channels an initial sharply contoured waveform followed by a brief attenuation with buildup of low voltage fast frequency activity that becomes more apparent towards the end of the page and is outlined in the black circle. Additionally noted is a spatiotemporal evolution of the seizure with involvement of adjacent F4 channels and temporal T4 and T6 channels towards the end of the page. In the second page of the seizure shown in bipolar montage, you can see in the beginning of the epoch over the right frontal region, the same evolving pattern of low voltage fast frequency activity. In the fourth second of the page outlined by the green circle are well-defined phase reversals and epileptiform discharges which initially in the epoch occur as quasi-periodic discharges. However, towards the end, they become more regular in their frequency. Also noted in this page is the delta slowing that is greatest over the right frontal region in comparison to the contralateral left frontal area. In the last several seconds of the page, you can appreciate subtle spatiotemporal evolution that is outlined by the purple circle where there is spread and increased higher amplitude delta slowing over the C4 P4 region. In the average montage of the same page there is noted to be a clear field outlined in yellow with FP2, F8 and frontal midline FZ regions involved. Note also in the F8 region there is a sharp wave embedded within the fast activity outlined by the black circles. This sharp wave becomes more apparent as the seizure evolves and progresses, especially towards the end of the page. Also noted throughout the course of this page, the low voltage fast activity and embedded sharp waves in the right frontal chains evolve to polymorphic sharply contoured activity that becomes rhythmic, especially in the F8 F4, T4, and T6 regions outlined by the red square. Also noted is regional hemispheric involvement of the C4 and P4 regions with polymorphic quasi-rhythmic delta activity that appears sharply contoured with embedded spikes outlined by the green arrows. The third page of this seizure shown in bipolar montage represents further evolution of the right frontal seizure with initial low voltage fast activity seen in the previous pages to more polymorphic sharply contoured delta activity in the beginning of this epoch that evolves into higher amplitude quasi rhythmic delta activity with embedded sharp waves outlined by the green circles. There is also spatiotemporal evolution with the right hemispheric chains, specifically the central parietal regions becoming involved with higher amplitude delta activity that becomes quasi-rhythmic in the initial epoch and later on becoming more rhythmic at one hertz activity towards the end of the epoch outlined in the green circle and star. The same page shown in average montage, you can see sharp waves where the previously well-defined phase reversals were. Some examples are outlined in green. Furthermore, there is further evolution of the seizure with delta slowing noted towards the end of the page. Additionally, the field evolves further with spatiotemporal spread to the central midline channel CZ, as noted by the higher amplitude delta slowing. In the last page of this seizure shown in bipolar montage, you can see in the beginning part well-formed epileptiform discharges over the right frontal region where the previously noted low voltage fast frequency activity was. Also noted a couple of seconds after that 
poorly formed epileptiform discharges in the middle half of the page with now having a blunted appearance and more representative of slowing. This brings us to the concept of post-ictal slowing, which is most obvious over the right frontal regions as outlined in the blue circle. Post-ictal slowing is defined as abnormal slow activity or suppression with amplitude less than 10 microvolts within 30 seconds of seizure cessation, lasting more than 2 seconds. In the average montage of the same page, there are clear epileptiform sharps with maximal amplitude over F8 and a field to T4, Fz, T6, and F4. Again, note the post-ictal slowing greatly appreciated in the right frontal region and outlined in the dark blue. This seizure from start to finish experienced evolution in morphology and frequency of the waveforms with initial low voltage fast activity to higher amplitude delta activity and ended with clear rhythmic epileptiform discharges was localized over the right frontal region and had a spatiotemporal evolution with involvement of regional frontal midline, right temporal, and central electrodes and ended with focal post slowing greatest in the right frontal region. The next type of seizure we will talk about is a focal electrodecrement seizure. In this page, which was taken from a patient with drug-resistant focal epilepsy in the seventh second of the page, highlighted in yellow and outlined in red, you can see over the temporal and parietal T8, P8, and parietal occipital P8, O2, as well as in the T10, P10, and P10, O2 chains, there is a focal electrodecrement which represents the onset of a seizure. The activity on the left side continues to be unchanged. In the average montage, in the seventh second of the page, there is sudden suppression of the background activity in P8 and P10 and an attenuation in O2, highlighted in yellow. The background activity on the left side continues to be unchanged. Focal electrodecrement is a common and important early ictal EEG finding, which is often missed by young learners. Additionally, intracranial recordings show that this phenomenon occurs when low voltage fast activity is observed on the intracranial contacts. Because of the very small size of these signals, they do not cross the scalp, and what you observe on the surface is the disruption, cessation, of the previously ongoing background activity. If we zoom in on P9 and P10, you can see the algorithm is replaced by very low amplitude, high beta activity. We will now talk about a left frontal seizure. In this bipolar montage EEG, there are clear sharp waves and phase reversals over the left frontal region. Additionally, the field is quite broad with spread to the left frontal, midline, and central regions, as well as spread to the right frontal region as highlighted by the blue circle. As the sharp wave activity progresses throughout the page, there is evolution in morphology and frequency and amplitude, initially starting at one cycle per second and then gradually increasing to four cycles per second, as noted by the dark blue circle and arrow. In the last two seconds of the page, the seizure takes off and increases with short wave activity from the theta range to more alpha range, eight to nine cycles per second. The morphology of the sharp waves also evolve with initially poorly formed complexes early in the epoch and later on well-formed sharp waves. Again, note the field would spread to the frontal midline channels as well. In the same page shown in average montage, the field is clearly appreciated with activity of sharps beginning in the left frontal and central F3 and C3 region and evolving in frequency from 1 to 8 to 9 hertz in activity. The spatial temporal distribution is also well defined in the average montage and shows sharp waves in the FP1 region as well as increase in sharp wave activity over the frontal and central midline channels FC and CZ. In the second page of this seizure shown in bipolar montage, the left frontal sharps occur now at a consistent theta to alpha range frequency. This is outlined by the red circle. They have also spread to the left hemispheric regional 
channels, including the temporal and central parietal region. Note the abrupt end of the seizure outlined halfway through the page with post-ictal slowing that is greatest in the left frontal region outlined in green. This seizure thus has an evolution in morphology with initial poorly formed sharp waves to more narrow spikier looking sharp wave complexes. There was evolution in frequency with initial occurrence of one cycle per second to seven to nine cycles per second and spatiotemporal evolution with initial involvement of left frontal region with subsequent spread to adjacent left hemispheric and midline channels. In the average montage, the spatiotemporal evolution of the seizure is clearly visible, with involvement of the F3, C3, and FP1 channels shown in the green highlight, as well as additional spread to adjacent frontal midline, FC, central midline, CZ, and F7 with low amplitude sharps noted. Again noted that as the seizure ends, there is post-ictal slowing that is greatest in the left frontal leads as shown by the blue circles. To wrap up, in part one of this module, we talked about focal seizures, specifically those with a brief pattern qualifying as ictal and time-locked clinical correlate, low voltage fast activity with an evolving rhythm, a focal electrodecrement seizure, and a left frontal seizure. Stay tuned and see part two of the next module where we talk about the right occipital evolving seizure, a seizure with greater than 2.5 Hz spike wave activity and a right temporal seizure.